Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this favor to creator call to action material. Okay, so starting off in a fresh project, the first thing you want to do is bring in the textures that I've provided for you in the Patreon. That'll be linked in the description below. And once you have those, they should be the creator icon, the mask, the exclamation point, as well as the rainbow gradient texture. Uh, you can then create a material, call whatever you want, I'm going to call it mm underscore service. Open that up. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the right settings on the material. So you can change it from opaque to translucent. Get those settings out of the way. We can start with the exclamation point. So the first thing you'll want is a time node. And you're probably also going to want a parameter node here. So you can just hold S and click to spawn one of those. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. It's going to control the color change speed, so probably name it something along those lines. You're going to want to multiply the time node and the parameter node you just placed together. And then you're going to put that into a sign node. So this is kind of going to create the color oscillation effect on the exclamation point. Then you're going to want a vector 3 node set to x just being 1. And then you're going to connect the sign node into a key shift node and then pipe the vector 3 that you just made into the texture part of that. And this is going to control all of the coloring for your exclamation point. So you're going to actually want that now, so just drag it out from your content drawer. And you're just going to multiply the result of that with the RGB value of your texture. And that's pretty much that part done. Next, we'll deal with the rainbow kind of text portion. So I'll probably scroll up a bit, make some room. Um, I like to add this kind of screen aligned UVs thing. It creates a cool effect on it. It's probably not necessary, but it looks neat. I'm going to want another time node and a, another name parameter node. This is going to control the kind of rainbow cycling effect on the text. So name it something intuitive as well. Again, multiply the time and the x parameter. Well, I want to give this a default value or something likewise for the other one from before. Then you're going to want to pipe this into a panel node. Uh, right there into the time of the panel. And then take the x, y of these from the line UVs, put them into the UVs of the panel. Uh, one quick thing to note. You're going to want to change the speed of the x and y values to be 1 here on the panner node, just so the colors will actually cycle through. And now you'll want your rainbow gradients. And just put those UVs into there. And then here's you're going to want the other two actual text textures. So the default icon as well as the mask. Put those in. So what you're going to want to do here is take the alpha of the mask and do an inverse of it, so 1 minus. You do that by just pressing O and clicking to place that node. And you're going to want to multiply the RGB of the base one with the inverse of the alpha of the mask. And then you're going to want to multiply the color with your mask. So this is pretty much making it so just the mask portion is going to be getting these color values, not the entire uh, texture. So you can then add these two together. And that's about it for that portion as well. We're going to connect everything up in a second here once we set up the other part. All right, next let's get a, another simple part out of the way before we get into the kind of hectic part. So you're going to want to just place a sprite node. So this is going to make it always face the player, regardless of the way they are. And something you're going to want to do probably is you want some parameters here. So the, to control the scale of the sprite that will be shown to the player. So you can use something, again, intuitive if you like. Sprite scale x and y. Put these into a append vector. So this will put these two together to be a vector 2, and you can put that into the xy scale of this node, and then just put the world position offset into 
the outputs offset. Probably could be some default values. I think 250 is a good size for this. But, of course. Okay, and finally, we're going to do the part that actually makes it change with the camera's distance. So let's move some of this stuff back to free up some space here for this, this portion. So we're going to want to start with a camera distance. Does it fade? Yeah. One of these notes here. And again, you're going to want some more parameter nodes. So one of them to control the distance and another to control the offset of the distance. So the distance will be like how far away you have to be for it to start changing. And then the offset will be kind of like a constant away from the actual object before it starts doing that. So this can be whatever you'd like. You should have some base values for this to actually work properly. Plug those into the fade length and offset accordingly. And then the result is kind of where we're going to be using this a lot. So first off, we're going to want alert nodes. You can press hold L and then click to place one of those. And for starters, we're going to want to do a linear interpolation of the alphas of both of our textures. So plug the alpha of your text portion as well as the exclamation point into the A and B nodes of the alert and then take the result of your camera depth fade and put that into the alpha. So that'll make it so the image fades shape as you get closer to it. And then you're going to take that and plug it into the opacity of your final texture. And you can see that here in the example as we get further and closer. It doesn't have color yet, but you can see it changes shape as you'd expect. And then next we'll need another one of those. So again, hold L and click, left click to replace one. And you're gonna take your color that you made for the first one, for the text portion that is, and plug it into the A. And then again, take the color of your exclamation point, plug that into the B. And you're gonna take your camera depth fade result and put it into the alpha of that alert. And uh, something I like to do is include a separate node for the emissive color. So you can multiply this one by something that will control your emissive strength through the uh, material. Give that a default value of 0.5 or something. That'll give it some nice brightness. OK, great. Now that that's all done, we're going to close out of that. Open up your content drawer, right click on your material, create an instance of it. And open up that instance. So, like the, the default settings are not too bad, and you can of course change them how you'd like. You can change the cycle speeds, the distances, and such that the drop off occurs. If you want it to be a very quick fade between when the fade happens, so you can, I guess you have to be much closer or much further by changing these values fit your needs. Uh, next up, we're actually going to attach this to the favorite creator object in the world. So I'm going to start off by going up to the place actor menu, go to shapes, place on a plane. You can rotate it as you'd like if you want, it won't matter because you're putting a sprite on it. And you're going to want to drag out your material instance, put it onto the material of the plane. And as you can see your material working in the world. And you're going to want to go to your drawer again, go to devices, grab a creator profile, throw that down. And something you want to do is probably parent your kind of material to that creator profile device. So mine is just called plain. You can probably name it something a little better. But you're just going to drag it onto the creator profile. Then you want to zero it out. So go to your plane, zero, zero, zero. If I want to raise it up a bit, kind of fit the height of the actual thing. The only thing you're going to want to do with this is change it to always face the camera. And then in the creator profile of the, or in the details, sorry, of the creator profile, you're going to go through each mesh and make sure they're all hidden in game. So that you only see your 
that call to action rather than the original devices. So you can set all those. And it'll look bad in the editor, but that's okay. It'll look better in game. But another thing you probably want to do is increase the size of your device so that it actually fits the kind of rough scale of your right there and that's about it and we'll load into a session see how it looks all right and in game you can see the material is working as intended as you get far away you get closer it'll change as expected get up to it you can open up your creator profile and yeah that's about it thanks for watching